Hey guys, it's uh, Brian back again with um, this is gonna be my first uh, new comic book day. I think in like three weeks because the last two I just didn't get around to, and yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna start off this week with May uh, Mighty Avengers number nine. Um, Ronin revealed. <clears throat> I'm not overly familiar with this character, so you know I don't understand what the big deal is. Apparently, you know he must have been keeping himself hidden for a long time because everybody seemed shocked. They all seemed shocked. But anyway, uh, it was I, I I've been enjoying the series because I really like Greg's Greg Land's work, and I think that Ewing. I'm not sure. Ewing, maybe, is how you say the guy's name. He's been doing a pretty good job writing. So, And also, um, the credit, She-Hulk. If you want to see what She-Hulk should really look like, take a look in this book. Because she, like she looks like a person, not a little squished egghead like she does in her own book. Um, I'll be honest, I was going to buy that book, um, She-Hulk, and I was going to stick with that title because I do like She-Hulk. I think she's a cool character. But after seeing the the pencils in that book, I just I just couldn't even pick it up. <clears throat> Next up, we have um, the Superior Foes of Spider Man. Now, I wonder if they're going to keep doing this book after they go back to Amazing Spider Man, because it would seem kind of corny to keep calling it the Superior Foes of Spider Man, since the whole Superior thing was done for the Superior Spider Man. Um, with this issue, I don't think they they didn't. Sh I don't think they showed any of the guys on the cover. It was mostly Grizzly. I think his name is Grizzly or Grizzly Bear. Um, it was more of that alcoholic and uh, Alcoholics Anonymous kind of uh, thing going on, you know. But everybody there was complaining about getting her about you know getting thumped by um, Spider Man or Doc Ock as Spider Man. <coughs> So that book, um, th this book, it, it yeah, um, so th this book, I think, slipped quite a bit from the other Superior Foes of Spider-Man books. Actually, it says final there, so I don't know. Maybe it's the last book. We'll see. So anyways, um, next up is Thunderbolts number 24. Um, as always, I enjoyed this book. Um, I think Adam um, and somebody else mentioned that. I, I know Adam um, mentioned that he likes the book because nothing major happens, but every issue is a good, fun read, and I have to agree. Um, things do happen in some of the books, but um, it, it's always a fun read, um, in my opinion, anyways, and apparently Adam's. But I really like this book, and this month was no different. Um, next up is Captain Marvel number two. Uh, yeah, um, so it didn't really pick up right where it left off last issue, but, um, or maybe it did, I don't remember. Anyway, I did like it. Um, I like the writing so far. I, I like that she's, Carol has gone back in outer space and doing that thing. Um, a little spoiler alert, um, the Guardians show up, and... I think you learn what a flarkin is, or some whatever that word is that Rocket is always saying. So that's pretty cool. The next book I got is The Wedding of, not The Wedding of, but it's Deadpool number 27, The Wedding of. And I have to say, I was really shocked at, I think it's a $10 price tag on this book. I don't remember. But I thought Amazing Spider-Man 700 was expensive for a comic, for a brand new comic book. And I think this one topped that. I haven't read it because I bought it for my son and I was busy reading other books that I really was interested in. Next up is All New X-Men 25. Um, yeah, this, this, this issue, I'm almost tempted to tell you to save your money on it, but there are some good things about it. Uh, they pulled a Harley Quinn, or they pulled a DC and did the what DC did with that Harley Quinn, I think Zero, where um, they had featuring, it's monumental, 25th issue featuring the greatest artist roster ever assembled. Now, what that means to me is there were some really, really nice pages and there were some really crappy pages. Um, 
yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. But so basic, the basic gist of the story is the Watcher comes down and um, Hank is trying to go to sleep, but he can't because he's got all kinds of stuff on his mind. And the Watcher's standing in like the shadows, so you don't know this Watcher other than the bald head. And he's, you know, basically gives Hank a hard time about bringing the old X-Men to the future. And so to make issue 25 um, really special and bearable, I picked up the Frank Cho variant. And I love Frank Cho's artwork, so yeah, I'll pick this, I would have picked this up even if it was a book that I don't like, because I love Frank Cho's work. Next up is probably one of my favorite books this week. Um, it was a good, fun read, and I'm really happy about that, because it would suck if this book, you know, we went through Amazing X-Men just to get to Nightcrawler number one, and number one sucked. That would have been a bad thing, but it didn't. Um... It's written by Chris Claremont, and I'm gonna, going to assume this Todd Nowak guy, or Nowak, Nowak, is the guy that did the pencils. I didn't really look for it on the inside because I just read the book, and the writing was good and solid, and the artwork on the inside was good and solid, so I was happy. I didn't even bother to look, so you did it. Um, but Nightcrawler, number one, good read. Um, dum 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 dum. dum. That's about it for the new. Marvel books that I did read so far. I have another stack of books over here I haven't read yet that I'll just give you a quick opinion about. You know, a completely unbased opinion because I haven't read the books yet. Anyways, next up is number 11 for East of West. Um, I love this cover. I think it's for, it's definitely, um, I love that East of West is keeping with the theme for their covers. But this particular one is really, really cool, in my opinion. Um, so for this book, they you didn't death. Um, death wasn't even in this book, which was a shocker because death is like the character in the book or the, the series. So yeah, death not isn't even in the book, but um, it basically gives you a all the all the the, the leaders of all the nations are, are getting together and. It's basically them just preparing to go to a meeting, and so it's not really exciting, that issue, but the cover made up for it, in my opinion. And we have Walking Dead, number 125. Um, I think it's um, Pride's Picks. She's been, um, when she saw that Rick got shot with that bolt that was smeared with zombie guck, you know, she's like, finally, Kirkman's, you know. You know, she says something about Kirkman's gonna have to make a decision. You know, is he gonna be a man and and, and get rid of Rick like he should? Um, because I mean, the guy's been shot, and plus it looks like it's the only choice, and things like that. Well, read the book, and I'm gonna spoil it for you. So, actually, you know what? If you read Walking Dead, you probably already got the book anyway. So I'm really not gonna spoil much for you. But anyways, I'll just say this: Pride's picks. She's not gonna be happy with this book. I'm pretty certain about that, just based on what she thinks of the other ones. And I'm not sure, but it seems to me this book is at least on a bi-monthly or a, you know every other week schedule, which is good because I really want this this story arc to be over. And uh, there's ooh, this was 11 of 12, so there's one more to go, and I'd really like to see what's going to happen after the whole Negan thing. Anyways. Walking Dead 125, I enjoyed it, and it was better than most of the recent books, uh, Walking Dead books have been. Next up is, um, ranks up there amongst my favorite titles right now, and it's, I'm just, I'm loving the book. Um, Manifest Destiny, number six. Artwork is solid, the writing is good. I'm loving this book, and I'm not going to say anything else about it because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody because, unlike The Walking Dead, I think that book should be enjoyed. Totally enjoyed, I mean. Because, I mean, everybody watches it. All kinds of people read The Walking Dead, blah, 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 blah. And it's not that big a deal. But Manifest Destiny, there aren't a whole lot of people reading. I'm not sure how many copies they put out every month, but... I do know that the first issue is into at least its third printing because I saw one on a shelf the other day. I was like, ooh, a first, you know. I was like, ooh, Manifest Destiny number one. I picked it up. I looked it over. It was the third, it was the third printing. So 
it's picking up steam, I think. But anyways, I love this book, and I hope you are enjoying it, too. I think that's it for the... That is... Yeah, that's it for the book, the image books that I've read this month. Now, next up is a book from Aspen Comics. And I really don't... I'm, I, I'm not even sure what else Aspen does on a monthly basis, but this book, the cover, this isn't actually the, yeah, it is. Anyways, this cover um, just immediately caught my eye because the artwork is, I, I'm really, really loving the artwork in this book. The only problem that I have with the artwork is proportions are off a little bit occasionally, um, but it's Lola XOXO, and I, I, I really enjoyed this first uh, issue. Um, just to give you a little bit on it, it's it's a post apocalyptic post apocalyptic story. So um, yeah, and it's you know like there, there's Wake is kind of post apocalyptic right now. Um, Hinterkin is like a post apocalyptic thing, and I'm sure there are other books out there that are just not coming in my just not coming to my head right now, but. I, 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 I don't know what the deal is, but I really like the post-apocalyptic kind of stories. Like, when I was a kid, there was a, a mini-series on TV called The Day After. Because, um, like, back, back in, you know, from, like, from like World War II all the way up to the late 80s, early 90s, you know, Americans have been fed this, this thing about, you know, nuclear holocaust and all that kind of nuclear war, and, you know, so it'd be apocalyptic and blah, blah. So... I don't know, the stories of, you know, growing up as a kid in the 80s and from, you know, being born in the 70s and growing up in the 80s, it kind of had, you know, we had that whole Cold War thing going on that a lot of younger kids don't, you know, have any idea about. So, you know, these stories really, they fascinate me and I like them. Like, there's a TV show not long ago called Jericho. I think it lasted maybe two seasons that I was really into. Um, a Canticle for Leibowitz is a book. Uh, that I read not too long ago that really was pretty good. Then there's um, S.M. Sterling. He's got this whole series of books about um, how he thinks things would go down after an event that causes all machinery to stop working. Now, his books are getting a little out there, a little far-fetched, because he's like introducing magic and shit like that. So it's not really... Um, it's more science. It's more. It's more fantasy than it is science fiction at this point. But I still read them and I like them. Anyways, I really love the pencils on this. Um, I don't know who Saya Aum. I, I can't even say the guy's name right. But anyways, or the person, woman's name, guy's name, woman. I don't know. But anyways, I'm pretty sure this is the writer and artist for the book. And I really love the. I really love the artwork, and so far the story is pretty cool. Um, let's go to Vertigo. For Coffin Hill number seven, I get the feeling that this is about Eve Coffin's mother and how she developed her douchebagginess that she is. I'm not sure. Um, I, I do like Coffin Hill. I don't really have a lot to say about it. Um, the artwork is good. The story's been good, so I don't really know what else to tell you. I mean, I don't want to really spoilers but i'm pretty sure it's about eve's mother um if i if i paid more attention to the names and stuff of of the other characters i'd probably be right on i probably know exactly what i'm talking about but at the moment i think it's her mother but i'm not sure um and it's, it's her mother when she was a child i think all right next up is quickly 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 jumping up there on one of my favorite books and it's a vertigo book and it's the royals masters of war issue three now, there's one thing I don't really like about the way this book goes is at the end of one issue, you would think that it would pick up, the next issue would pick up from where the end of the last one, right? But this one doesn't. With the first book, um, uh, Henry, you know, he, you know, the book is about how the royal, you know, their father, the king, is trying to keep the kid. You know, he said that the powers skipped him because they skip a generation occasionally. He said that you know, he, the powers did skip him, but it didn't skip his kids. But he made every he told the world when the kids were born that they didn't have any powers, 
and there's two brothers and a sister and all three of them have some powers and so the king wanted to keep it hidden because he didn't want the kids to get involved and get killed and destroyed and all that kind of stuff so at the end of the first book Henry's finally had enough of the blitz and all that stuff and you know and he well yeah and, and he he flies up and he, he destroys a bunch of German shit and then at the, the end of the book the very end of the book He's dropped into Germany, in, I think Berlin, and he's whooping ass. And a royal from the German uh, royal family shows up. And that's where that book ends. And it doesn't pick up there for book two. In book two, they pick up, the three of them have gone to, have come to the States. And they're linking up with some Americans who I don't think, I don't know where they get their powers from. I don't think they're royals. But... They link up with them, and it, the major um, important part of that book is that a Japanese royal shows up, basically to let you know, say, "Hey, we're get, we're coming to get you." You know, he, he basically showed up to deliver the you know we're attacking, so get ready. And then that book ends, and then this book picks up with. They're in the Pacific. Um, the Battle of Midway is about to go down, and that's where they're at, and that's where this book picks up. So it's like they're just skipping, jumping, jumping really quickly through things. And so, I mean, I like the book. I just kind of feel like there's stuff being left out. You're just going to have to, I guess you just have to fill in the blanks on your own. Next up, um, so that, that's it for those books. Actually, you know what? Since that's a DC book, or those were DC books, I'm going to get to the only. No, not the only DC book I bought, but a DC book that I bought just because it looked interesting, and it's Aquaman and the others. I'm not a big fan of Aquaman. I like to make fun of Aquaman just as much as everybody else does. I think it's funny as hell that Raj got stuck as Aquaman for uh, Halloween. And, you know, Aquaman's kind of a stupid character. But I like the cover. I like Dan Jurgens a lot, whether he's writing or drawing the book. So I thought I'd pick it up. And I did. And I liked the book. Um, if you're a DC fan and you're not reading this, give it a try. Um, if you're not a DC fan and you might want to break into DC a little bit, give it a try. But I enjoyed it. Alright, that's done with that now. Um, so next up is Valiant and Bloodshot and Hardcore number 21. So here it is. Um, this is, I think, the last book in the Maybe not. In the Mission Improbable storyline, it's actually book four. So I think it might be book five and six, but I'm not sure. Uh, basically what happens in this is Bloodshot and and uh, Armstrong are they're duking it out, you know, stabbing each other, hurting each other, stuff like that. And Bloodshot's like, I want to talk. And Armstrong's like, what? You're fucking crazy, motherfucker. I ain't talking. You know, you know I'm done, you know. He's like, I'm old, I'm not stupid, so, you know, they're fighting a little bit more. Bloodshot convinces and lets him know, hey, you know, I got this, that, the other. And Armstrong says something to him about, yeah, that's why I drink so much. And Bloodshot mentions that he can't, yeah, I can't drink anymore. Or, you know, drinking doesn't do anything for me because the nanites prevent intoxication. So that right there convinces Armstrong to be like, to stop fighting. He's like, oh, man, give me, you need a hug, you know, because the poor guy can't get drunk. So anyways, uh, basically what happens is um, uh, Bloodshot and Armstrong work out a deal to get PRS off of, out of the sect and off of uh, Armstrong's back. And that's the major important part of it. There are other better, there are other interesting better parts to the story, which I'll let you read. Um, anyways, it's that book. Next up. I'm going to get to the books that I haven't read yet, um, just because I haven't had a chance to yet. So, start off with Unity number six. Um, damn. There we go. That's a, it's got the crazy eye right there, right? Yeah. So anyways, um, I got to get to that book. I actually got to get to the last couple of books on this one, because I, I, it's just been, I just been missing it. I don't know why. But it'll give me something to do. Next up, I'm really looking forward to reading this next book. And let me quickly sort the books by 
company at least. Okay, so the all new Ultimates. I kind of thumbed through it a little bit this morning before I went to work. I uh, gotta give it a thumbs up, and I really can't wait to dig into it and start reading it. So, yeah, it looks awesome. Avengers AI number 11. Um, I'm kind of starting to lose interest in this book, even though I do like most of it. But it's, it's kind of losing me a little bit. And the reason I'm sticking with it so far is I really like the Doombot. I really think he's funny. Um... You know, I, I, it's just funny. It's a, I mean, imagine if you had an evil Roombot around, around your house. That's kind of what Doombot's like. Um, Iron Fist number one. I didn't pick this book up. Um, the guys at the shop have a tendency to throw shit in my box that they think I'm going to like. And so when I saw it, I was like, eh, I'll give it a shot. Um, I haven't even gotten to, to even thumbing through it yet. But I will, and I'll let you know what I think about that later. DC, uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, number seven. I haven't read it yet. I thumbed through it a little bit. I like the artwork in this book a lot. Um, and I like the fact that the paper stock for this book is really good. I really like it. The cover is really thick. Um, the inside is really nice and glossy. Uh... And what was the fucking oh? It's three ninety nine. Whereas most of Marvel's books that are three ninety nine, the paper is not this quality. Um, and that kind of you know sucks because you're paying for it. You might as well be getting it. Unlike with Image, where you're paying like two ninety nine for a lot of Image books, and the paper quality is there. So Marvel needs to stop fucking us over and start giving us decent, you know, decent stuff. You know. A decent book for the price. Um, and it's sad because really Marvel is... I've always been a Marvel fan. Uh, way more than DC. Next up, Sons of Anarchy, number eight. Um, one of these days I'm going to have to break down and actually read all of these books. I like the TV show, so I just figured by saving them all at once, I'd read them all at once like a trade paperback. This is the last book I've got. I need to read it soon. But uh, it's Magnus Robot Fighter number two. The f let's see here. That, that's there we go. The first book was awesome, so I'm hoping this one will be as well. So that's it for my new books. Um, I haven't picked up any old books, but maybe next week I'll have some old books. Hopefully, I'll have a Amazing Spider-Man 101. I'm hoping. Um, what else did I thumb through today that I want? This is just one of the cool things about working at the comic shop is I get to see new books, um, new collections that come in. And I just got to talk to the, the owner and see if he'll sell me the books. Because, I mean, it's kind of a douchebag move. You know, I work there to thumb through stuff first and, you know, before customers get a chance to look at it. But if Tom's okay with selling me the book, or I'm sorry, if the owner is okay with selling me the books, then... I'm cool with that, and I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting to get them for dirt cheap, you know, I don't mind paying, you know, the store price for them, but it's just some books that are kind of difficult to find, and it's just stuff that I want in my collection I don't plan on ever getting rid of. So, if you watched this long, thanks uh, for watching. Take it easy, salutations, have a good day. Um, I'm still working on a sign-off tag, it's probably never going to happen, so thanks for watching.